The full-scale Russian invasion has been going on for two years. During this time, Ukraine's allies constantly supported Kiev, providing all kinds of assistance. In particular, the USA continues to provide both financial and military assistance. During these two years, the Ukrainian military received many modern and effective weapons that made a difference on the battlefield. We want to introduce the best samples of weapons and combat vehicles the USA provided to Ukraine. Behind me you have the M109A6 Paladin. A6 Paladin Howitzer. And the crew of this uh, cannon now uses the cluster munition provided by the United States. So we went out to find out how it affects the battlefield. The M109 Paladin is the US Army's primary tool of indirect fire support. With standard shells it's already a powerful weapon. So why does Ukraine need cluster munition? The answer is simple, it's effective. This is an M864 cluster munition with an electronic fuse. That means you can set the time when it should go off. It's very efficient. The enemy horde is just too big. Clusters are the best way to target an area with no need to hit each and every infantryman. Postrel! Ukraine relies heavily on modern howitzers like M37s to suppress the enemy and provide cover for its own troops. So today we are working with the 45th Brigade. This is the artillery unit who are working with the M37s. They are covering the infantry units. For advancing in the direction of Klishkivka, the nearest village to the Bakhmut. During the last months, this unit has been working tirelessly, pushing themselves and their M37s to the limit. 200 to 250. That's a whole day of work. If you maintain the gun, it does not fail. Each howitzer has fired tens of thousands of rounds. We enter the angle to understand how high to raise the barrel. We have a bubble meter that we use to set the level, and we have an angle meter. We enter the angle, and through the sight, we aim at the collimator and rotate the gun accordingly. The first howitzers to arrive in Ukraine were used to liberate the Kharkiv and Kherson regions. They also played an important role in the Vuhledar direction, where Russia tried to advance with large forces this winter, but suffered significant losses. It's a unit with Hydra 70 rockets. I have already completed 10 combat missions with these rockets. The Hydra 70 is an unguided air to surface rocket widely used on many aircraft in different countries. Provided by the USA, this weapon already proved to be extremely efficient with a longer reach compared to the Soviet made S 8. And thanks to some crafty modifications, it's now compatible with the Mi 24. Why are these rockets important? I believe that this is what Army aviation needs and in large numbers. They help us on the battlefield, and we, in turn, help the infantry. Last summer, the US sent 18 high-speed patrol boats to Ukraine. Some of them are now serving in the 1st Division of the River Fleet, like these 34-foot dauntless sea arcs. That's pretty nice, very good 34-foot uh, patrol boat, which is being uh, widely used in the uh, United States of America for river and fleet. Maneuverability and speed of this boat is quite incredible. The maximum speed is like 35 knots, so when you try to turn the vessel 180 degrees, the advance will be just below than 10 meters. 10 meters and you are going backwards on the boat where you don't have, say, full protection. So you, don't, you are not protected from uh, 762 or even more calibers. So that means that you have to be very maneuvering, otherwise you can get hit. Till now we did not get hit luckily, so it means we are doing our job quite good. In addition, each vessel has three-point mounts for M2 Browning machine guns and MK19 40mm automatic grenade launchers. Hi Mars, 
which stands for High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, is used by various militaries around the world and is produced by the US American company Lockheed Martin. It's highly mobile and, depending on the ammunition used, can deliver precision-guided rockets to targets at large distances. The exact number of HIMARS currently in service in Ukraine is not really publicly available, but according to sources like the New York Times, there are at least 20 in operation. The first HIMARS were delivered to Ukraine in summer 2022 by the US and their effect was felt almost immediately. Firstly, their mobility allows for rapid deployment and relocation, making them difficult to target. They also have a long range, enabling Ukrainian forces to strike targets deep within enemy territory, such as warehouses, depots, but also barracks and supply lines. Additionally, the satellite precision-guided rockets carried by HIMARS offer enhanced accuracy, minimizing collateral damage and improving overall effectiveness. The first rockets received by Ukraine have a range of over 90 kilometers. HIMARS have been used in countless locations along the front line in Ukraine. Most specific attacks involving the system are not readily available in the public domain due to the sensitive nature of ongoing military operations. But there are some examples that show just how effective this weapon is. For example, on New Year's Day 2023, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, 63 service members died in an attack on a building housing Russian soldiers in the region of Donetsk. Officials on both sides said it was carried out by HIMARS. Another example is the strike on Antonivsky Bridge, which connects the city of Kherson to the left river bank in summer of 2022. The ATACMS, or Army Tactical Missile System, a type of surface-to-surface -surface missile system designed to engage and destroy targets at ranges of around 300 kilometers, potentially doubling Ukraine's range with the HIMARS. The M1A1 Abrams entered service in the United States Army in 1985. Since then, it has undergone several upgrades and improvements to maintain its superiority on the modern battlefield. Main characteristics Firepower The M1A1 is equipped with a 120mm smoothbore cannon, capable of firing a variety of rounds, including depleted uranium ammunition that's heading to Ukraine. We made a video on why this kind of ammunition is so controversial but also important, you can check that out. Engine the tank is powered by a Honeywell AGT-1500 gas turbine engine, producing around 1,500 horsepower. This engine allows the M1A1 to achieve impressive speeds, around 72 km power max depending on the surface and terrain, and maneuverability despite its considerable weight. A gas turbine engine is multi-fuel, meaning it can run on almost anything that burns, diesel, kerosene or petrol, but it does differ quite a bit from a standard diesel engine used in most tanks. That was a point of concern for many, but up until now, Ukrainians haven't had that much of a problem adapting to different weapon systems. Also, the Soviet T-80 has a gas turbine engine, so it's not something the tank mechanics here are totally unfamiliar with. Protection The tank's composite armor, including depleted uranium layers, provides unmatched protection against a wide range of threats, including armor-piercing rounds. It also features MBC, so nuclear, biological or chemical, protection systems for crew safety. Mobility the Abrams is extremely mobile thanks to its advanced suspension system and powerful engine. Its operational range on a single tank of fuel is approximately 450 kilometers, but of course that varies depending on what type of ground you're driving on. The Patriot, or phased array tracking radar to intercept on target, is a lot more than just a truck with some missiles on it. One, a launching station that can be operated manually and remotely. There are different variants of the Patriot and different variants of the ammunition can fire, but according to Ukraine's Air Force spokesperson Yuri Ignat, Ukraine is receiving the Pak-3 missiles for their Patriots. These are the newest, most efficient and compact family of missiles, and each of the four canisters that can be mounted on the launcher can hold four missiles themselves, making it a total of 16, as opposed to only four in total of the larger, bulkier, older variants like the Pak-2. Number two, a high tech radar that combines surveillance, tracking, and engagement of potential targets. Number three, a so-called engagement control station, short ECS. It's the command center. While the highly advanced Patriot system does a lot automatically, the final launch decision requires a human command. Number four, the support system. The radar and the control station draw electrical power from a separate electric power plant vehicle called the EPP, which consists of two 150 kilowatt generators. So, as you might have guessed at this point, the Patriot is one of the most complex systems in the world and can shoot down aircraft, ballistic and cruise missiles. It's been around since the mid-80s, so again be aware that there are different types and variants. But typically, and in very, very simple terms, it works like this. The radar first classifies flying objects in the sky into the categories of friend and foe. In the event of a threat, soldiers in the control room fire the missiles. Dozens of possible targets can be monitored simultaneously and up to five can be actively engaged. 
The Patriot can track and engage an object at up to 100 kilometers and up to altitudes of over 24 kilometers, depending on the missile used. So you can imagine a kind of bell around the position of the Patriot, the area of potential engagement. But the system is smart and will typically wait to engage a target until it has the highest probability of kill. So the chance of actually hitting the target is highest. The NASAMS, short for National Advanced Surface to Air Missile Systems, also consists of a command post, sensors, radar system, and munitions that can be fired from a standalone pod or from the back of a truck. Its radar can detect threats of up to around 125 kilometers, depending on factors like the weather and size of a target. The NASAMS utilizes the same kind of missiles already in common use with Western fighter jets, like the AMRAAM, which costs only up to 300,000 US dollars a piece. That makes it still a lot cheaper to use than the Patriot, and also the munition is more widely available. Bradley is a real old warhorse, deployed in the Second Gulf War and the US invasion of Iraq in 2003. It's an IFV that has already fought against its Russian counterpart, the BMP series, for example, during the Battle of Easting 73. Why does that matter? During this time, more Iraqi tanks were destroyed by Bradleys than by the larger and more powerful Abrams battle tank. The Bradley has already fought successfully against the exact Russian vehicles that they will face in Ukraine. The M2 Bradley was even specifically designed from the earliest planning stage to be able to penetrate the turret armor of the Soviet BMP-1 at a distance of more than 800 meters. The M2 Bradley has a 25mm cannon that can pack uranium-enriched ammunition. It can also load the tube-launched, optically-tracked, wire-guided, tank-busting missile called TOW, similar to the German Milan, which the newer versions of the German Marder can attach to the turret. It sounds complicated. Another way to put it, it's a missile attached to a wire. The wire sends a constant signal, making the person who sent it able to steer it in flight. The Striker. It's an infantry carrier vehicle with a four-wheel as well as an eight-wheel drive setting. So although it doesn't run on tracks, it's very good for rough terrain which is what it will be almost definitely facing if deployed on the current front line. The wheels are supposed to withstand quite a bit of damage and it works well as a support element for main battle tanks, protecting against imminent threats in close proximity. Some are more lightly equipped, designed to transport troops, and other variants have more advanced independent fighting capabilities. It is difficult to overestimate the role of US weapons in the course of the Russian-Ukrainian war. Even though the enemy outnumbers us, the armed forces of Ukraine managed to defend our land and carry out counterattacks, thanks in part to the effectiveness of modern weapons. However, these weapons are still not enough to ultimately defeat the enemy. We are hoping for new help from our allies for our joint victory.